Since the discovery of the Big Bang, scientists have discovered that our universe came into existence at a finite point in the past. This discovery was a monumental shift in the history of science, and many scientists objected to the implications of this discovery because up until that time, pretty much everyone believed that the universe was eternal. This was partly because they knew that the discovery of the Big Bang, if true, just like the discovery of the fine-tuning of the universe, pointed to a cause and creator of the universe. The Kalam cosmological argument says, Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe had a beginning, therefore the universe had a cause. This argument is saying that there is a universe that exists now which either did or did not have a beginning. However, both science and philosophy give us good reason to believe that the universe had a beginning, and since everything that has a beginning must have had a cause, there must have been a cause for the beginning of the universe. Also, according to scientists, the Big Bang was the moment when time, space, and matter came into existence, and so whatever caused the Big Bang must have been timeless, spaceless, and immaterial. We also know that the universe has not existed infinitely because of the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the universe is running out of useful energy in a way that cannot be reversed, and once this is finished, the universe will end in a heat death. However, since the universe still exists, that means that the universe has not existed for the finite amount of time it will take to run out of useful energy, which is less than an infinite amount of time. Therefore, the universe has not existed for an infinite amount of time and must have had a beginning at a finite point in the past. We also logically know that the universe is not eternal, because if the universe had existed for an actual infinite amount of time, then we would have never reached this present moment. If the universe had existed for infinity in the past, then this present moment would have already happened within the infinite amount of time that the universe had already existed. However, we reach the present moment which has not existed until now, which means that the universe has not existed for an infinite amount of time in the past. Think of it as if someone told you that they finished counting to infinity. You know that they could have counted to a pretty large number, but they could have never actually finished counting to infinity because infinity by definition is not a number you finish counting to. There would always be more numbers for this person to count. In the same way, since this present moment has never existed until now, the universe could not have existed for infinity in the past. This shows that the universe must have had a beginning, demonstrating premise 2 of the Kalam cosmological argument to be true. So now we need to go back to premise 1 to see if everything that begins to exist has a cause, because if not, then the entire universe of time, space, and matter may have popped into existence uncaused out of nothing. However, we don't have any examples of something coming into existence out of absolutely nothing. When an effect takes place, like the beginning of the universe, we have good reason to believe there was a cause to that effect. After all, nothing, which is literally no thing, does not have anything with which to make anything else out of, especially the entire universe. So we have shown that we have good reason to believe that the universe had a beginning and that everything with a beginning must have had a cause, so it is reasonable to believe that there was a cause for the beginning of the universe. This cause would have had to have been timeless, spaceless, and immaterial to cause time, space, and matter to come into existence, which is consistent with what the Bible says is the cause of the universe, which is God. Interestingly, the fine-tuning of the cosmological constants in our universe also points to a creator of our universe. Scientists have discovered that the structure of our universe, from stars to atoms, are determined by certain fundamental cosmological constants. It turns out that these constants must fall within an exceedingly narrow range for life to be possible. Scientists have discovered that we live in a Goldilocks universe, which has a gravitational force that's not too strong or too weak. The universe itself is not too hot or too cold and is also not expanding too quickly or too slowly. For example, the ratio of the electromagnetic force compared to the gravitational force is 1 in 10 to the power of 40. If this ratio was changed even slightly, then our universe would not contain both small and big stars, which are both necessary for Earth to sustain life. Large stars produce most of the heavier elements like helium. These stars burn up quickly and end in explosions that help spread out the heavier elements, which can be used to make make up future stars, while smaller stars like our sun burn for a longer amount of time which provides stability for our life permitting planet. To visualize just how narrow this range is, this range is like stacking coins on all of North America up to the moon and trying to pick one coin out of not all those coins, but all those coins one billion times. So 
Good luck with that. This fine tuning to allow life to be possible also applies to many other parameters in our universe, such as the constant of the strong nuclear force, the expansion rate of our universe, and the distance of the Earth from our sun so that the Earth doesn't get too hot or too cold. Even atheist and agnostic scientists have admitted of this appearance of fine tuning in the universe. Atheist Stephen Hawking has said, the remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. Sir Martin Rees has said, wherever physicists look, they see examples of fine tuning. And Fred Hoyle has said, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics, and that there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. The numbers one calculates from the facts seem to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. While these scientists do not conclude from the evidence that this necessarily means that there was a fine-tuner of the universe, it is interesting to note that the fact of fine-tuning is agreed upon by scientists even though they may disagree about what this fine-tuning means. The fine-tuning argument for God's existence claims that the precise selection of these values within such a narrow range is most reasonably explained by a creator or designer of the universe who created the universe with these specific parameters for the purpose of allowing life to be possible. This seems to be a more reasonable explanation nation compared to an uncaused universe that came out of nothing and just happened to have the precise cosmological constants necessary for life to be possible. Also, scientists have not discovered any reason why these constants must be the way that they are and could not be otherwise in a way that does not allow for life to be possible, so it is reasonable to believe that there was an intelligent designer of our universe who chose these cosmological constants to be this way specifically for the purpose of allowing life to be possible. Interestingly, from a Christian perspective, we would expect to see evidence of an intelligent designer of the universe in the universe. The Bible tells us, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse proclaims the work of his hands. Both the Quran cosmological argument and fine-tuning argument claim that a timeless, spaceless, immaterial, and powerful fine-tuner of the universe caused the universe to come into existence from nothing at a finite point in the past. However, if you're still not convinced that these arguments point to a designer and cause of our universe, please watch this video. Please like and subscribe for more videos that share God's love through apologetics, and remember, Jesus loves you.